Hello everybody, Tyler and all things archery and shooting. Welcome to my channel today. Today we're going to do another vintage bow review for you. This is going to be the uh, review on a Bear Bruin. This is a 1973-1974 vintage, best I can tell from my research. And you're probably saying, what's a Bear Bruin? I don't recognize that bear name. Well, you're right. The Bear Bruin is basically a bear grizzly with a few minor differences. These bows are made for the big box stores like uh, Montgomery Ward, Sears, uh, J.C. Penney's, those kind of people. This one, for instance, was made by, for Montgomery Ward, okay? Bear buying a bunch of these bows from Montgomery Ward, and, and they sold through their catalogs in the early 70s. I was able to find this bow in an early Montgomery Ward catalog from 1973. A little bit different color, but basically the same bow. And the bow sold for $69.99 back then, okay? So basically the bow, like I said, it's a Bear Grizzly. Um, it's a 58-inch AMO bow, which is 58 AMO total length. It's a 50-pound bow at 28 inches, all right? This one here is in really good shape. It's super clean. It's got the original rest and original hair rest on it, which is kind of remarkable. Looks like it's hardly been used at all. Uh, the bow has no marks on the bow at all. Okay, and according to the guy I got this from, by the way, I purchased this from eBay. I paid $61 for it, so it's a pretty much a steal. But I spoke to the guy that bought it from, and he said it used to belong to his dad. He bought it, and I think he hunted with it for, did never went to hunt with it, never got around to hunting with it, put it up in a closet, and it pretty much stayed there since the early 70s and his father recently passed and he dug the bow out and now he's selling it. Uh, like I said, I paid $61 plus, uh, I think it was $24 or $25 shipping. So what's that, about 86, 90 bucks I got in this bow. And this bow is essentially a bear grizzly. I'll go over the different parts of the bear grizzly you see the difference and I'll compare with another bear grizzly I have here so you can see how close they are. All right, uh, the bow is, uh, from what I can tell, the wood, it's just a standard maple wood, nothing fancy about it. It does have black glass on the, on the front and the back of the bow. It has two layers of, of maple in there for the core, all right? It does not have the uh, adjustable tips on it or the fancy designer tips, like most of your grizzlies came with the white ivory tips or the green tips on here or the black phenolic tips. This does not have the tips on it, just standard cut into the bow itself. Uh, it does have your um, string guide, which is kind of mostly big box stores you don't find on there. It does have the Montgomery Ward Bruin name on the back here. Um, it's got a few nicks and dings, that's the major part of being stored. It has the original string on it too, which is kind of unique. All right? Of course, I'm going to replace the string because I don't trust strings this old. But let me go and get you another bear grizzly one I have here. We'll compare the two and you can see how close I'm going to start. Almost identical. They're basically built in the same form that bear had. It's just they weren't as finished as finely as the bear bows were. So let's get a bear grizzly and we'll compare it. Then we'll set this bow and take it out of range and put it through its paces. Okay, here's another bear grizzly. This one is a 1967 model, okay? And we're going to look at the difference between the bows, okay? You can see here the sight window on the bear grizzly is the identical sight window. They both have a, this one, the, the bear grizzly has a radius rest. The bear bruin has a flat rest on it, so that's one of the differences, okay? Now the bear bruin also has a larger Hands swell for some of the larger hands, bigger hands, okay, compared to the smaller ones for the uh, Bear Grizzly. Uh, they both have two layers of maple, same thing here, all right. This one here is made out of babinga wood, all right. So this is a 1967 vintage. And you see it has the white ivory decorative tips on the end of it to reinforce them. Uh, this bow does not have those tips, as you can see. Also, the limbs on the bow, if you look at it, they're same, the same sweeping on them, and they're the same width, so they're both identical there. All right. Um, the weight of the bow is roughly the same as the as the Bear Grizzly. All right. Um, we haven't really changed much on these bows in all these years, but we're going to go. Ahead, I'll get the camera here, get you a close up of these two bows. You can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. I'll get you a close up. Now, first, we're going to look at the this one here. This is the Bear Bruin. Okay, as you can see. Got a nice sight window in it here. All right, it's got a. This is the. As far as I can tell, this looks the original rest. I asked the owner about. It. He said he never changed the rest on it, so it looks too good to be the original. But he said he thinks it's the original rest. This was a comparable rest that Bear put on their bows back in the day. It's actually the same rest as shown in the catalog. Um, you can see it's never been used. Never been an arrow on top of this rest. It's, he said his father bought it. Never really shot it. Was ten on going hunting with it, but never did. But anyway, here's the information on it. You can see here it's a AMO 58 inch. 50 pounds at 28 inches and built in the USA. All right, it is a standard maple wood in here, as you can see. That's a pretty grain in it, though. I love that like star crossing with the grain there. That's kind of unique. It's kind of pretty. It is maple though. It does have two cores of maple in there as well. All right, as you can see here, it's just the back glass of the bow here. All right, it's pretty. 
your standard Y limb that comes down to a tapered point here as you can see and you can see there's no uh, reinforced tips on this like on the regular Grizzly alright look on the back side of it you can see where it says the Bear Bruin which is right here Montgomery Ward Bear Bruin there you go okay it does have your um, string guides in it which is right here alright and let's take a look at the Grizzly now you can see that see that how close they are together you can see here put them real close together you can almost see identical how, how they are let's take a look okay see here same size sight window same design of a grip and they also have the same um, reflex design I'll show you from over here see here the tips are almost identical all right and you come down the bows are the same I'm going to cross you there. You can tell that the, the Bruin has a much wider grip on, but most of these I've noticed on bare bows, they're all, because these are all hand finished, they're going to be, not everyone's going to be the same, but it's still got the same design contour to it as well, okay? That's got a little bigger palm swell to it than the regular Grizzly does. Coming across, and then there you go, the tips, okay? All right. One more thing I noticed is different about this bow. I just checked it out. Look at the limb thickness here. The limb thickness on this, on the Bruin bow, this one here, if you look at it is, can you see that? It's one and three quarters of an inch thick at the middle of the bow. Take the Barrett Grizzly, this is only an inch and a half, okay? So this does have a wider limb on it, all right? I just noticed that when I was setting them side by side, you can definitely see, it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but sitting side by side, you can see this limb is much fatter or wider than this limb is here, okay? I'm just going to set this to the side. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up now. The right, first thing I do is get rid of this original string on it. Okay, I've got a new string I bought for it. It's a B50 Daycron string. As you can see, this is the original string with it. Okay, uh, of course, it has the big loop and the small loop. And the, um, so this is the original. It's pretty dried out. There has been waxed. It hasn't been, never been shot. So. All right, so let's get rid of this string here. Now let's look, I've got me a new string here for it, which is right here, okay? I picked up this string here on Amazon. I think I paid like, I don't know, I think I paid like seven, eight bucks for it on Amazon. It's a um, B55 Daycron string, 58 inch AMO 16 strand, okay? So we're gonna use this on this bow here. Let me show you how I'm cut the string when I cut this open. Okay, cool. All right. There we go. Oh. It's made by Deer Seeker Archery. <laughs> Comes in a standard little silver foil pack, but it's made by Deer Seeker Archery. That's interesting. But it is a B55 Dacron 58 inch 16 strand string, okay? Let me get my bow stringer. Okay, I know, I, I know I say this all the time, but you should be using a bowstring. These aren't expensive. They run less than $10. You can get them on, on Amazon. Especially these older bows, you don't want to do a pu uh, push-pull method or a step-through method because you have a chance of twisting the limb. You need to get a good bowstring, okay? They're not expensive, and they'll, and, they'll, and they'll help protect your bow. Let's get this thing strung up now, all right? Now, I looked on, uh, on uh, the Montgomery Ward's website, I mean, old catalog, and it said in the old catalog, oh, it comes with two... Oh, come two knocks, cool. And the catalog that I was able to find online, I'll go ahead. It said that this bow required an eight, a seven and a half to eight and a half brace height, which is about the same for a little grizzly. And grizzly is seven and a quarter to eight and a quarter, so it's almost the same. This does have one big loop and one small loop, as you can see. Okay. Of course, the big loop goes on the top, small loop goes on the bottom. Put the big loop on there first. Put the small loop on the bottom. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah, 
it's a tight string that deer stick straight. No wonder it's only eight bucks. <laughs> okay, all right, good enough. Let's go get this thing strung up now. I got the string finally on. Let's get it strung up real quick. Then we'll get it, get a knock on it. We'll check the weight on it, okay? Here we go. Site, but I'm sure that once this thing this has quite a large brace height on it from that eight dollar string and it is a 58 inch AMO it says there this is a 58 inch AMO so let's see what the that's pretty high brace height there oh not too bad it's only eight and a half so it's just probably going to stretch out between that with that eight and a half will probably stretch out over time so I'm sure to leave this thing strung up for a day or shoot it for a while it'll stretch on you all right Let's go ahead and get the knock on it, and then we'll get the to weight on it, okay? It came with two knocks in the bag, which is kind of nice, so we're going to put the knocks on it using a bow square, okay? Now I shoot three under, and I'll be asked where I set my knock at. I always set my knock, see that black mark right there? Uh, right there. That is one eighth, two eighths, that's three eighths above center. That's where I set mine, because I shoot three under. And I find that 3 8 above center seems to work the best for all these bows. So, at least for me anyway, I'm shooting for these pair of bows. Let this on the thing in there. Okay. There we go. You just want the thing to see. I just want it barely touching that rest, okay? Take your knock. Sit in that position right there. Take your thing and just crimp it in. Okay. All right. Take the bow square off now. Now just go ahead and crimp your your rest really good. Ugh, nice tight crimp on it. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and check the weight on the bow now. I have a standard bow scale here. Then we'll check it also on my tiller machine in the back. We're first going to check it with this bow scale. Remember, I'm pulling 29 and a half inches. And these bows here, when they were built, they were built pretty quickly from bare archery. Not saying they weren't built good quality, but they really didn't spend the time to get the bow limbs where they're supposed to be. Most of these I found these, these bows like this, like the Panther I've got a lot of testing. They usually run quite a bit over or quite a bit under. So we'll see how far this one comes in, all right? And then we'll check it on the tiller machine in 20 inches. So first we'll check it with my draw scale at 29 and a half inches. Here we go. good no creaks no cracks that's nice and like I said this bow is pulling 54 pounds okay which is probably about right for a 50 pound bow usually pulls about two pounds or inch over your over 28 inches let me go in the back and I'll check in on my draw scale now I'm sorry I'm my tiller machine here we go right back okay well I checked this on my tiller machine in the back and believe it or not it comes right at 50 pounds at 28 inches and it my draw in 29 and a half in the tiller machine comes in at 53.7 pounds so my handheld scale was right in the money so almost 54 pounds of my draw length so that's pretty good especially these big box production bows all right uh, I gotta tell you that hand swell feels really good that larger hand swell feels really good in the hand right there and I mean the bow is just I mean, it's, it's in super clean condition as you can see I really like I mean I've got a few things from stores but nothing that can't be fixed and more and more I look at this rest, it looks identical to the rest in the, in the Montgomery Ward catalog I found online. But I don't see any yellowing or any deterioration on the, on the edges. So I think this was a new rest he replaced on it. He told me he didn't replace the rest on it, but I think he did. So it definitely looks like a new rest to me. All right. But you can tell the, there's not much juice on the bow. I mean, it's, it was never taken in the woods. It's got a little bit of marks here. You can see right here. These are mostly from people with a, with a ring on their finger. When they put their hand on, I see these quite a bit on these bows, little dings like that. Those are marks from a ring. Otherwise, I mean, the bow's in clean shape. It looks good. We're going to head out to the range now and put it through its pace and see how she shoots. Now, remember, this bow I paid $61 for plus $25 shipping. It is a bare bow, okay? I don't see any 
um, Bruin information, I mean, bear listed here anyway, but according to Montgomery Ward catalog, it was produced by bear instead in their catalog. But usually you can find a bear marking on here somewhere. I don't see any bear markings on here. But anyway, but it is a pretty good bow for the, um, and the Bruin makes sense because that's also kind of a bear name. So let's head outside to the range. We'll put it through its paces and see how she shoots, okay? All right, I'll see you out the range. Hey everybody, Todd here, All Things Archery and Shooting, and we're going to go ahead and put um, the range review on this bow now. We're going to go ahead and shoot this bow in this chronograph here. I'm going to shoot two, two, two arrows out of this bow. First arrow is going to be 10 grains per pound of draw weight. It's a carbon shaft. This is a 450 spine carbon shaft, 30 and a half inches long, with a 125 grain point, 100 grain insert, and 4 inch turkey feathers. This comes in right at 540 grains, so right at 10 grains per pound of draw weight. And the next arrow we're going to shoot will be a hunting weight arrow. This one is the same, 30 and a half inches long. This has also has a 150 grain insert with a 145 grain point up front. It says 4 inch turkey feather, same 450 spine, but this arrow is coming in at 670 grains, okay? So let's go ahead and get this chronograph fired up and see how she shoots. Okay, I got the chronograph set about 10 foot in front of the target. I'm going to be about 10 foot behind the chronograph. First arrow we're going to shoot is going to be these 540 grain carbon shafts, okay? Let's see what we do. Six shots. First arrow. One sixty-eight. Second arrow. One sixty-two. Third arrow, 173. Fourth arrow, 173. Fifth arrow, 164. Sixth and final arrow, 173. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and shoot these 670 grain shafts, about 12 grains per pound of draw weight. Here we go. Reset the chronograph. Okay. Okay, first arrow, here we go. One fifty six. Second arrow, one fifty seven. Third arrow, 1.57, no read, third arrow, 151, fourth arrow, 150, Fifth arrow, 156. Sixth and final arrow, 157. Accuracy part of the test, take one. Okay, everybody, as you can see from the speed test of the chronograph, 
This thing's averaged about 155 feet a second for a 670 grain arrow and about 173 feet a second for the lighter weight 540s. I've been shooting this bow for a couple days now. I just get the feel like I do all my bows before I do my reviews. And this bow really likes these heavier arrows. So we're going to be doing the rest of the, of the shoot with these 670 grain carbon shafts. We're going to shoot three arrows at 20 yards first, aiming for this spot here. Then I'll step off 30, shoot three more, and then we'll step off 40 and shoot three more and see how accurate the bow is and see how it feels. All right, let's get started. 30 yards. I'm sorry. Let's get started. 20 yards. Here we go. Okay, that is my, see, three, two, one, action. That is my 20 yard group. Okay, 20 yards, it's about two inches right there, all in the nine and 10 zone. Let's get these out. Okay, that was 20 yard group, about two inches. Let's move to 30 yards. Here we go. 30 yards. Okay. All right, wow. That's a nice 30 yard group. Okay, I got one in the nine, two in the 10, 30 yards. Actually, two in the nine, one in the 10, 30 yards. Not bad. All right. Let's head to 40 yards now. Three arrows, 40 yards. 40 yards is about my max distance, so let's see what this bow can do at 40 yards. Okay, this is my 40 yard group. It's probably about the span of my hand, which is about five and a half, maybe six inches at 40 yards. I got one in the bull, but I had these two to the left. So, like I said, 40 is about my max distance. So, all right, let's go ahead and um, back up and check the tilt of the bow at and my anchor point, see how it shoots from downrange, and we'll close up from there. Here we go. 
Then my 20 yard mark, let's put some arrows down range. Three arrows, check out the anchor point and tilt the bow. Here we go. Okay, I just shot my three arrows down there to 20 yard mark. Let's see how it looked, okay? Here we go. Walking down there. Okay, I'll set this right here. Get it tuned in here for you a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. Last 20 yard group, same thing, about two, two and a half inches, okay? All right, let's head on inside, get out of this heat, get my final thoughts on this um, bear broom bow. Here we go. Everybody. Hey, it's Tyler, all things are shooting just left the range out there with this bow shooting this Bear Bruin bow by Montgomery Ward. This bow was designed by Fred Bear and built by Fred Bear for the big box store like Montgomery Ward, Sears, J.C. Penney, what have you. This one came from Montgomery Ward, they call it the Bruin. It's basically identical to a Grizzly with a few um, differences, which I went over in the, earlier in the video. But it's also a lot cheaper than the Bear Grizzly was back in the day. This bow was sold through catalogs, mail order. And you can find them at their stores. You uh, have to order them. They bring them into the stores for you. This bow sold for $69.99 back in the day. I paid $61 for the bow. So it is a 58-inch AMO bow, 50 pounds at 28 inches, identical to a Grizzly's AMO length. All right? Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and rate this bow on six things I rate all my bows on. That would be the quality of the bow, specifications of the bow, shootability of the bow, the speed of the bow, quietness of the bow, and, and lastly, would be the value of the bow. First, let's talk about the quality of the bow. I mean, the quality, it doesn't meet quite meet a bear quality. It's uh, it's still good, it's built pretty well. It's missing a few of the niceties that bear has in it, like the like the reinforced tips and the decorative tips on it. It has a wider limb, which I don't really like the wider limbs. So, uh, but otherwise, I don't see any glue marks or sanding marks on it. This bow is it's still the test of time. It's, what, 74? Let's say 74, this is 2024. The bow is almost 50 years old, so, I mean... It's held up real well. It, I mean, like I said, the guy I had it before said his dad really never shot it, just set up in the closet. But I mean, it's a pretty good um, example of quality and craftsmanship back in the day. Again, Bear didn't finish these bows as nicely as the Bear Grizzlies, but these did sell for about half what a Bear Grizzly sold for. But it's still overall still a nice bow. Um, I did check the weight on it, weight right on the money at 50 pounds at 28 inches, which is really nice. It is a full 15 inches, which is correct. So go ahead for the quality of the bow, let's go ahead and give it, just, we'll give it a, just give it a 7 for quality, just because it's not up to par of a bear bow, but it's still pretty good though, alright? Let's talk about the specifications of the bow. Uh, specification of the bow, bow's a 58 inch AMO, 50 pounds or 28 inches, and this bow is right on the money with that. So you can't beat it there, I mean the bow has hardly been used, it shoots really well, I mean the specs on it meet everything it's supposed to be on it. Uh, I was going to take this pad off, check behind it. I really don't want to tear it off. It's been there for a while. It's too nice. So, but I did check it on my tiller machine. It came in right at 50 pounds and 28 inches. So for specifications, we're going to give it a 9 because it meets all the specs of the bow. Okay. Be, all right. Shootability. Well, this bow here, it does shoot just like a grizzly. Like I shoot, grizzly's probably my favorite bear bows. All my bear bows, a grizzly one is. And I shoot a lot of grizzly. I own five myself. And it shoots just like a grizzly, it really does. It shoots, I mean, it points like a grizzly. It, I mean, the arrow's going right where I aimed at. I mean, 20 and 30 yards, I was two and three inch groups. 40 yards opened up to about five to six inches, but that could have been me too, because it was, my bow was starting to get really sweaty. My hands were, it's like 98 degrees outside, and sweat was getting in my eyes, so the bow was kind of slipping and sliding a little bit. So I probably could have got a little better group at 40 yards, but still, five to six inches at 40 yards with a um, shooting instinctive, with a, with a 50 year old bow, you gotta say it's pretty good. So for shootability, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9, okay? Okay, we're going to talk about the speed of the bow now. Uh, the speed of the bow, I mean, I was I was not disappointed in the speed, I'll put it that way. I mean, this bow averaged 173 feet per second for a 540 grain shaft, and for a 670 grain real heavy shaft, the bow was moving at an average of 155 feet per second, and the bow did like the heavier shafts better. So i got to tell you, I mean, the speed is, I mean, it's pretty comparable to most of the bows built these days. It's probably not as snappy as like the Bear Kodiak or the new Bear Super Grizzly, 
but it's still pretty respectable speed on it. So I wasn't, I'm not complaining about the speed of the bow. I mean, I can launch a 670 grain arrow at almost 160 feet per second and a 540 grain arrow almost 175 feet a second. I mean, I got no complaints there. Uh, I'm not a big speed guy, and I do like my bows for the, um, for, um, kinetic energy from the recurve bows that just store a lot of energy. So for speed, we'll go ahead and give it an 8 for speed, okay? It's not, I mean, it's pretty respectable, all right? Let's talk about the quietness bow. Overall, the bow was fairly quiet. I did notice some hand shock in the bow. It made some noise. It's a little twanging off the recurve limb, which I'm sure can be fixed with a, with a um, uh, Velcro pad there and some string silencers. But overall, the bow shot really well. I mean, it, I mean, it was pretty quiet for my off-the-stop, so I'm pretty, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure if I put some string silencers on it and put some um, limb pads on it, it'll quiet it right down again. I'm not sure what I can do about, this, about the hand shock, but probably uh, after you shoot it for a while and get a quiver on it, help source that hand shock. So for quietness, we'll give it a we'll give it an eight for quietness because it's not really that loud. It really isn't. Value of the bow. Let's talk about the value of the bow. This bow was sold at Montgomery Big Boxer, like I said, like J.C. Penney, Montgomery Ward, Sears, etc. Both sold for $69.99, and I found it in a 1974 Montgomery Ward catalog I found online. That took some digging, by the way. I'll try to put a link there for you, but I mean, it took me probably a couple hours to do research on this bow. Um, and the bow is made by Bear. It says right there in the Montgomery Ward catalog, uh, made by Bear. It's called the Bruin, and it was $69.99 in 1974. I looked up a comparable bear grizzly back in the, in the same time frame, and the bear grizzly was $155, $154.95, basically $155 in the same, so in the same year time frame. So the bear grizzly is more than twice what this bow sold for, and they're basically identical except for the few interests that the bear grizzly has. The bear grizzly is finished better. They spend a lot more time on the grip area, for instance, in the sight window and on the tips of the bow and stuff. But I mean, for a bow designed to be sold at big box stores and mail order catalogs and things like that, it's, I mean, you can't beat the value. I paid $61 for it. I think I got a good deal on it. I mean, so I'm going to give it a nine for value. So not too bad. Okay. Let's add all that see what it comes up to. Not too bad. It comes out 50 out of 60 for overall. I mean, remember all my, all my, my six things are rated from one to 10. So 60 being the highest you can get, this thing scored 50, which puts it in the top one-third of the bows I've tried. So, I mean, not too bad at all. I do love that. Let me, let me talk about what I like about the bow and what I don't like about the bow. First off, I like the value of the bow, the price. It's a really good price for the bow. And I love the, the wood on it. I thought this was maple, but the more I look at it, it more, looks more like Shadoa to me. The more I look at it, so it's probably Shadoa. And the catalog doesn't really list what kind of wood it is. But I compared it to some other bows I have here, the Shadoa and Maple, and it's more closely resembled Shadoa wood than a Maple. So I'm going to say it's probably a Maple, and not a Maple, but a Shadoa wood uh, on it. It does have the um, Maple, as you can tell, the Maple um, laminates in it, which the Maple is a lighter color than the Shadoa wood, so that's why I want to say more like it's probably Shadoa wood on the, on the riser and Maple in the limbs. It does have fiberglass on the front and back. Both shot really well. It's a fairly accurate 50 year old bow. It shot just like a regular Grizzly. For, I mean, I don't compl no complaints about the way it's shot. Um, so I was happy with that, happy with the accuracy. I'm happy with the speed too. Only couple things I don't like about the bow is, um, well, I don't like the Montgomery Ward stamp on it, but not doing anything about that. But anyway, I did, I did notice some hand shock with the bow, which is kind of unique on a recurve. I don't really see a lot of hand shock on a recurve, but this definitely has some hand, especially the 540 grain arrow. There's a lot of hand shock with the 670, sort of quiet that and, and toned that hand shock down, but it was still there. And it's got quite a bit of limb slap. Right? Nothing too terrible, but it does have some limb slap. That's only a couple things I can tell you I don't like about the bow are those two things. But go, those are easily fixed with string silencers or limb silencers. And you put a quiver on the bow, probably rid of your um, bow shock. Overall, this is a great bow for the value of $61. All you gotta do is spend some time looking online. I found this one on eBay. You can find these yourself. There's several more like just like this on there from $50 to $125, $150. So you don't gotta spend a lot of money to get a, a good quality bow to hunt with. So overall, I mean, for the value of the bow and the, and the price of the bow, you can't really go wrong. Bow is designed for more of a beginner. It's not more of an intermediate bow. It's more of a beginner bow. So my current reward sold these in like 100 packs and buy themselves for beginning hunters and stuff. So anyone who picked this bow up that's used to shoot a recurve will find it's very comfortable to shoot, easy to shoot, all right? All right, well, that's been my review on the 1973-74 Vintage Bear Bruin 
by Montgomery uh, for Montgomery Ward um, recurve bow. Uh, if you like this channel, click that like button for me. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also click that bell icon next to the description button. There'll be a lot more videos coming up. I am continuing my series on the bear grizzly for hunting this year. I'll have that uploaded pretty soon to you. Um, so that'll be coming up. Also going on a hunting trip with that bow in August in South Carolina. So be sure to look for that as well too. That'll be coming up on this channel real soon. I want to thank you guys for watching. I've got almost 10,000 subscribers, so I'm almost there. A few more, I'll be over the top. So I want to thank you guys. It's all because of y'all. All right, well, this has been Todd with All Things Archery Shooting. Leave me a comment. I love answering your comments. Any questions, send me a question. I'll see what I can do for you. And I'll try to answer all my comments. All right, until next time, y'all, this has been Todd. Ciao.